Undisputed queen of hip hop, Nicki Minaj. Yeah. You want that one? No? Whatever you want. All right, everybody gotta get settled down. Everybody gotta get settled down. We're here for a while. Nicki Minaj, thank you so much for being hey, here. Hey, how are you? I'm excited. I told them, y'all, I want like, the, they always ask me like the intro song, the outro song, like that Metro Boomin one. That's like, you know, that's like the hip hop -y. You know, everybody always tries to put you in a box, but that's like that hip hop, like that bounce, like, you know, that's why I was like, I want to start with that type of energy. I didn't know the crowd was gonna go crazy like that, but like. <laughs> but, talk, but talk about Once Some More on the album and this placement on the album and, and what it represents and how, like, you know, you kind of like, because you're one of the biggest in the game, you know, you have this, these people's expectations of you and the musical direction you should go in and everyone quarterbacking your, your music. But I feel like with this record, you kind of said F all that and you just found your, your place in it and was able to balance the diversity of everything that you are as an artist, you know, is, is that fair to say? Absolutely, yeah. I definitely found my niche and I'm not chasing anything, you know, I'm just doing me and oh, once some more, <laughs> <laughs> once, <laughs> once some more is, you know, one of those songs that I knew that, um, you know, it was hip hop and yeah. it had the, you know, it had the right balance for the club and I could just talk my shit on it and I just really had fun. Yeah. <laughs> so are those? Like, the thing with all your art, like, you're, you're, you're so hands-on in every aspect of your art. I think it gets overlooked sometimes, like, you know, not just being the artist, but you, you every single sound we hear on a Nicki Minaj song is, is signed off by Nicki Minaj. So how do, you, how, do you, how do you balance that when it's like, you know, you, you are the executive producer, you're the boss, but you know that there's all these people, like, that want things from you. Like, how did you get to that point to feel comfortable that, like, you know what? This is where I'm at. Um, I wouldn't say that it's a comfortable feeling. I don't think being the boss ever feels comfortable. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, it always feels uncomfortable, but that's the point. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like only the people that are willing to do the hardest job do that job. You know what I'm saying? So, in the beginning, I always felt like, no, I know what I want my shit to sound like. And... And I was pretty confident in my own opinion. And even when I, you know, I had to learn the hard way sometimes, but it was good for me to learn, you know what I'm saying? And I kind of feel like I made all my mistakes and with the pink print, I, um, it just feels like. <laughs> Can she Magic answer? Organic Classic, I love it, I loved it, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is it? What it talk to people like? What's that process like? Because you know, a lot of times now artists feel like, well, you know, what's the importance of an album? You know what I mean? Like at this point in culture, like you sell a lot of singles, but it seemed like with this record, you felt this was very important to your career, and you really took your time piecing this project together. Like, talk a little about that process of like, you know, we're celebrating now because your fans finally have their hands on it. But talk to me a little bit about that process of just putting the print print together. Well, um, I said before, I said before that the other albums took like three months to um, make, and the Pink Print took like a year because I've I've been working on it since I put out Looking Ass Nigga. Mm. Mm. A little something, something. Yeah. <laughs> a little ether, but mm, <laughs> nothing, not a big deal. No, <laughs> but um, it really was like. With the album, it it wasn't about Anaconda. Just happened, really. I didn't. Naturally. Even, I didn't even try to do a song like that would be a hit on Billboard. It really wasn't double platinum it, type. It, of yeah, record, it did. Yeah. It, it didn't come out yeah. like that. It didn't. I didn't plan it like that. I just wanted to do something fun. I thought it was gonna be more urban, but yeah. it turned out to be very pop. Mm -hmm. And so 
because of that, I kind of felt like mm, I don't want, I didn't want people to think that you know I was reaching for that for that you know the pop mm -hmm. shit. Because you already um, succeeded in that. Yeah, on a I, major already, level. yeah. I already did it. Yeah. The pink print was just about me showing the culture what I think the culture should be about. I think the culture should be about skill. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. No, but here's the thing, though. No, but I think that what gets overlooked, though, what, it, what gets overlooked, though, is that when you say skill, like, wait, 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 we're here all night. You got to relax. We're here all night. She ain't going nowhere. We good. Um, when you say skill sometimes, I think a lot of times the problem with hip hop is we get so caught up in bars and skill is just that. But there's also a skill to being a hit maker, to being able to write records that are going to resonate and impact culture and make an anaconda. Not like some people can freestyle and write 48 bars of terror, but they can't make an anaconda and it feel natural. So you, again, you have to balance those things, no? I, I think you should be able to balance it, but I think there should always be a foundation of skill. Mm -hmm. Do you think that? And I'm never gonna not feel like that. You should always have skill. No, no, I don't. I agree, but. And the, and the word of the night is skill. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, but do you feel like when you first, like, because you caught a lot of criticism with the second album about, you know, the whole second half of the second album is you kind of going in a, in a new direction, you know, unabashedly, and then Starships took off, and you caught some criticism, and there was all this controversy that we know. Like, so when you first, you know, you did some interviews, you said this is kind of a return to hip-hop and just kind of making people feel like maybe it's a little more one-dimensional. But like you said, you, you didn't go just solely that way. You found a way to keep both things and make it feel even more organic and celebrate the skill. So how did that happen? How were you able to do that? Um, I think that part just came from me learning and growing as a musician. I think, you know, I feel like anything you do, eventually you'll get good at it if you practice. You know, perfect practice makes perfect. And I've really worked at just me, you know, whether it was just hearing a beat or um, knowing what my audience wanted from me, knowing what kind of beat I shined on, knowing what kind of beat, you know, for instance, like the intro for the album, All Things Go. Yeah. I knew that on that song, I wanted to say certain things that I needed everybody to hear and understand every word. And it couldn't be a bunch of difficult punch lines, it couldn't be a, a quick flow, it had to be something that was intelligent, but easy to understand. Yeah. And so I got a Boy Wonder beat, because I knew that the way his beat sound, it, it kind of draws you in. There's mm -hmm. something about his beat. It's the perfect backdrop, kind of, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah. It's almost like hollow, it almost lends itself to you just kind of like speaking to people. So I think growing as an artist enabled me to be on the pink print and make better decisions. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It wasn't something that I not necessarily knew was going to happen, but I definitely took my time with it. Mm -hmm. And I promised myself that if nothing else, I was going to take my time with my third album. Yeah. Well, you talked about All Things Go. Like, was that a hard... Like, so when you decide that like, you have the right track for that, I always tell people there's like a courage in creation, right? Like there's a courage to write that down, there's a courage to record it, and there's a courage to share it with the world. Like what was that process like to feel like these are these feelings I have? And I'm just, I'm just going to let it out. I'm just going to share it with the world. I'm going to let those things out. It was very, very, very scary. Um, the second verse, I was talking about my little cousin who died, and I had never spoken about that. And... Um, He, you know what, I remember the last time I saw him, mm -hmm. he told me how uncomfortable he felt by how people were treating me. Like, he was like, don't let nobody come around you and use you. You know what I'm saying? He was like, these Protective. Of yeah. You, yeah. And um, he was like, I ain't even want to come here today because I knew people was going to come here not to see your mom, because it was my mother's birthday. 
but to see you and be asking you for pictures and da 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 and he he knew that I was uncomfortable with that and he was so like overprotective of me but he was going through this all this craziness niggas was like really trying to kill him and I now when I think about him I just keep thinking like why didn't he tell me? You know, like, mm -hmm. I had never expressed my guilt to anyone. I just wrote it. I, his family never knew. Like, I'm really close with his sister. She didn't know. And so after I wrote it, it was hard for me to listen back. Like, mm -hmm. the entire song, All Things Go, I love that song, but I hate it, too. Like, it's hard for me to listen to it. You know what I'm saying? Because... Every time I listen to it, I feel like I relive it. Mm -hmm. So that's the only difficult thing yeah. about writing things that are very personal. It's like, you're going to have the hair for the rest of your life. Are you really going to be okay with reliving that moment, reliving that guilt, reliving that pain? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, but then definitely. if you don't write it, it feels like you're not being completely honest I want to remember where I was at in my life right now. Like 10 years from now, I want to listen to the pink print and remember what I was feeling and, you know, even whether it was good or bad. So I got to write it down. Yeah. And even the third verse, you're getting more personal about your, your mother's relationship with your mother. You talk about an unborn child that we didn't know about. Like, and I, you tell you speak about how difficult it is to put that in. Like, when you did, um, wait, wait. When you did Saturday Night Live, I noticed that you didn't even rap that part. Like, you let the, the audio play. So I, that, you still, it's still difficult to, I guess, continue to express those things at a certain level, yeah, right? Yeah, it's very difficult, yeah. Because yeah. it's something that I put in the back of my mind for so many years. And I guess I know a lot of women can identify with feeling like, if I don't think about it, it's almost like it didn't happen. But... But yeah, of course, it's it's difficult to think about that. Yeah. And then what's it? Like, I remember when I was talking to Drake, and Drake had that song on um, the last album about his his relationship with his mother, and he was saying how when his mother heard it, she was very upset, like she didn't understand the feelings. Like you put this stuff out there, and then as an artist, then your family does hear it. Like you talked about your relationship with your mother. Like what has been the reaction of your family to the song once it once it's come out? They don't mention it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really, really weird. They they don't mention it. Yeah. Only thing my mother said, which I thought was really weird, is she was like, "Better lies. That's that must be hard for a certain person to hear." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and and she, you know, she she made me feel bad. <laughs> I no, I did, I did. Before it was before it came out, or just no. Well, as she's been hearing it, she never hears my music. Well, here's the it thing: you not only put the record out, like that's the single. You out here doing the Ellen, the Today Show. It's better lives mania. Like, why did you decide to really put that record out, like on center stage? Like, I didn't imagine that when I was doing better lives, I was gonna end up performing it on every damn show. Either. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Seriously, because I was thinking about that today. I was like, I don't want to perform no goddamn better lies today. <laughs> like, <laughs> but what you going to do? The, the reason why I put, I put out better lies because I was doing the um, EMAs, right? Yeah. Do that in a little med medley, threw it in right, real quick. Right, right. Light work. Right. And then when we put it out, people started asking for the song. And then I'm like, you know, I couldn't perform only on these shows. Yeah. Like, I'm, you know, it's a curse. You can't on... bring everybody out. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, yeah. because it's. It's, oh, raunchy, the lyrics. Yeah, yeah, the lyrics. We'll get to that. We'll get to all of <laughs> You like that raunchy material, don't you, Onika? I don't, I don't <laughs> like it. It just... Is it a... <laughs> no, but let's, let's stay on Better Lives for now. Better Lives for now. Better What's this? So what, what? How do we... It's like, so that's like a Scholar Gray sends like a rough demo, right, of some vocals, like... How does talk to me, like talk about the process in that? Like, how does that become a Nicki Minaj song and a song that Nicki Minaj really feels like, okay, this is what the statement I want to make? Because even the title, Bed of Lies, that's a heavy title. You know? They said, mm-hmm. Actually, um, Detail brought it to me because Detail was doing some songs from my album and he just brought the chorus, but he wanted to do a beat under it. And I didn't, he tried a couple beats and I didn't like it. So I said, let me find a couple people that I think could make a beat for it. 
And mm-hmm. I went to Kane. I went to Alex the Kid. And I ended up liking what Kane did and a part of what Alex the Kid did. So I put what Kane did, what <laughs> Alex the Kid did. And you did this a lot. We'll talk about that. You do this a lot. You yeah. be pairing producers yep, up. Like, I do. Yeah, yeah. And they don't be liking it, but they don't... <laughs> But they be like... Like Anaconda was a bunch of people right, together. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, all right, so Nick, you get the track You get the track where it needs to be. Okay, then, what, then what's the process? How do we get to the lyrics? Oh, uh, well, I got the track to where it was, to where I loved the, you know, the knock of it. I wanted it to still feel like you could head bob to it. And then I just started writing. And um, I, was, <laughs> I was just... Was you mad? Was you angry? No, no. Was you it, sad? You know what's like, so what was funny? It? I wasn't mad. And... Yeah. I was just reflecting. Sometimes people think that when I write something, it means that that's how I felt right then and there, or that's how I feel right now as the pink print is out. Like, no. <laughs> we, everything was good at that time. But oh, really? I was, yeah, everything In a relationship was... at, that, at that point. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I don't know if that warranted all that. Okay. I'm sorry. All right, all right, all right. We're here, we're here. You're doing a flag on the play. I, I stepped out. I was wrong. I stepped um, out. Everything was fine. And yeah. in fact, we were laughing together. Oh, playing it back like, I and got you on this. Ah, <laughs> check it out. <laughs> you hear that? Yeah, you ha- we had to call baby on that shit. I called baby. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, no, isn't that the I'm sorry. I remember he was like, I just realized this is a diss record to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and we started crying. Laughing. Like, we was rolling on the floor, cracking up. Yeah. Don't make her cry now. We ain't got no clean next to each other. No tears. We ain't got no tears here tonight. Okay, on, more on the fun side. Um, well, not the fun side. Only. Let's talk about only. I mean, how, like, you know, we say, like, MC start that song, I got you stuck off the mill, it's the opening line. How you start a song, I never F, when, F, F Drake, like, where does that come from? Like, why did you feel like, let's take that track and let's go all in with that? And a lot, here's the thing, to, to, to go back to Old Boy and not go too crazy, some people felt like that record is like a diss to, to Old Boy, but it's like, like you said, you may have been cool at that time, it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, like... It's just art. Like, what made you feel like I'm on a song with Wayne and Drake, and this is, fellas, this is the topic we're going to address kind of as a narrative throughout the song? I just knew that I was joking. When I said that, I was joking around because I was trying to write on that beat, and I couldn't figure nothing out. And I just was like, I never fucked Wayne, I never fucked Drake. (laughs) Well, my life, man, fuck's sake. If I did, I'm a nod with him and let him eat my ass like a (laughs) cuck. All right, I get it. <laughs> punch out or duct tape? Worry about it, my. These girls are my sons, Johnny Kate. When I walk in, I don't give a fuck if I was late. Okay, so then, so did Why you, so, y'all gotta be so extra? Oh my God! The most extra crown ever for crown, man. <laughs> so when you when you lay that down, you lay it down, you lay that vocal down first, and then you play that for Wayne and Drake right. and be like, fellas, this is how we doing it. Wayne rapped on it, and Drake heard me and Wayne verse. But did Wayne know Wayne? I'm gonna open the opening line is gonna be similar. No, this is the thing. You gotta understand this. When you're dealing with greatness, icons, like yourself, and geniuses, like yourself, we didn't have to tell each other to start the rap that way. Well, YMCMB. Do right? you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't call Wayne and say, "Yo, Wayne, start your rap by Drake. Start your rap by." Mm-mm. Just like Drake didn't tell me, Nikki, start your rap by saying, "On Trump, thinking out loud, thinking out loud." Mm-hmm. We didn't have to tell Wayne to say, thinking out loud. That's that YMCB chemistry, it's just, yeah. No, it's just greatness. Like, mm-hmm. it just happens. Ooh. For real. It's certain things that don't have to be... <laughs> it's skill. certain things skill. that don't have to skill. be said. Yeah. Okay, so Wayne lays it down. Like and, then, and then 
And so Drake heard my verse and Wayne's verse because I think Drake was on Wayne's bus. And he was like, oh, yeah, I heard Wayne doing laying the tour, it. Doing the yeah. tour, yeah. And, um, and I was like, all right, well, I need you now. You know, let's hear it. <laughs> Come on, buddy. And... I remember when he told me, he was like, I, I want to go to the club first and get turned up and then come and do it. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And then when I heard his verse, I was like, you know what? I can't fuck with you. <laughs> I can't. Like, he just... So you punished him, but we're going to get Chris Brown the hook. That's what it is, <laughs> You had it open. I'm sorry. It was over. Don't leave, Nick. Don't leave. No, I'm sorry. Now, how did, um, how did you, why did you decide to put, was Nick, was uh, Chris Brown already on the hook? He like, knew, he knew Chris was going to be on the hook. Yeah, I yeah. told him. I would never, yeah. I would never surprise him. I'm not corny. Yeah. Was, was that an overall vision that you wanted that to be that way mm -hmm. and have those guys on the record all together? Like, why, why, why yeah, was that Yeah, but important? I thought everything, you know, I thought everything was fine. So, yeah, I, I liked Chris, Chris's tone for that hook. Yeah. And, of course, I wanted Wayne and Drake to be on it. So, it wasn't like, you know, I never thought like, oh... Drake and um, Chris Brown's gonna be on the same song. This is, mm -mm. it was just, I know Chris gonna sound good singing this, mm -hmm. and I want Wayne and Drake rapping on this, and that was it. Yeah. No, oh, definitely. I mean, you speak about the chemistry YMCB. I, obviously, now, like, Wayne tweeted him being not happy with cash money, so you guys are not a hot topic of discussion. Like, what's your take on all that? Like, what, what was your feelings when you first saw that? Like, were you surprised that Wayne went public with whatever differences he may have? I was very surprised. Um, I knew that there was some stuff going on, but I didn't know Wayne was that angry about it. I didn't, you know, I knew records get pushed back. I mean, that's just the, you know. Business of it, yeah. Um, and usually Wayne is really cool about that. Like, you know, um, we have the same management. And, like, I always tell my manager, like, yo, y'all be... Y'all know how to work Wayne projects because y'all will push it back and back and back and then people will fiend for it so much. Um, so he, he, I don't remember him ever being like that about that. So I don't think it's that. You know, I think it may be some other stuff that, that just as family, they need to figure out. And I really want them to figure it out because I love them both so much. Yeah. I mean, people will realize that, like, obviously they know your loyalty to Wayne, but, I mean, you, got, you have a great relationship with Baby also, right? A f fantastic relationship with Baby. I love Baby. Like, he's one of the most genuine dudes I've ever come across in this business. And everybody knows how I feel about Wayne. Like, yeah, you know what I definitely. mean? So it's, that's just like a, one of those situations where... What do you what do you say? You know what I'm saying? That's like your two brothers. You know what I'm saying? But I know they're gonna work it out. Yeah, it seemed like that was the sentiment that you said and, and Mac Main says, like it seemed like, okay, well maybe this is just you got like you said, like you're not always the bestest friends. Like there's differences that happen, but it usually don't play out in the public. public right. Yeah. Oh yeah, because honey child, if people knew a lot of things that been <laughs> went down. <laughs> Well, I think when I think people were shocked when, when people would look at a lot of them <laughs> very differently. <laughs> is, is, is YMCB a dysfunctional family? You know what? Of course <laughs> we are. When you dealing with geniuses, a, yeah. it's like, and I don't want to say that not in a cocky way. I'm saying that there's a real thin line between genius and crazy. And everybody in this business is really a little bit fucking crazy. I'm not trying to be funny, <laughs> including me. And I know that, like, I, I know that I'm a little bit off and I can't, I, I've never been able to put my finger on it. And sometimes I ask people, my manager, or I'll be like, what's wrong with me? and wanting to know and like really wanting a diagnosis. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. Is it because you're so driven? It's almost like you can't stop. ever turn down and just kind of just like, like it, to me it'd be hard for you to go on like a real vacation and just two weeks and oh, no, do no, nothing no, no. and I've you know. never, I've yeah. never gone on a, a two week vacation. The last vacation I went on was a two day vacation and I was like. Let's get to work. Yeah. I'm a workaholic and that's the only thing that I worry about because when will I be a mommy? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> made a blush. Like, when, no, because I think about this. I think about so many humongous female icons that we loved and cherished, and they never had children. Yeah. 
like Janet. You know what I mean? Like, people like that. Like, I'll be like, because I, I, cause I can't imagine, no disrespect, I can't imagine a woman not wanting one day to have children, mm -hmm. you know? So I always think when people get to a certain age and they didn't have children in this business, do they feel guilty? Do they feel like, oh, I put this shit first and now look like, you know what I'm saying? I, I want to ask older women in the business, I want to ask them that. Yeah. Well, you build a relationship with, with Beyonce now. Like, do you see, are you impacted by seeing her, like, with her child and with Jay? And, like, you know, because you got to really kind of get to know her. Like, is that something that you can inspire? Because I feel like also when you say this, you also say, like, well, you almost felt at times you may have to stop your career and focus on that. But then if you see someone like Beyonce, that if it's in you, it's almost like you have to try to find a way to balance both, you know? I personally, I love what Beyonce um, has been able to do, but I personally want to really so, mm -hmm. and focus on and just focus on the yeah. child, like, and see what it's like. <laughs> I can't. You said, "Who is you?" I'm. So <laughs> Stop! I hate y'all. Y'all are embarrassing me. Stop! How you gonna say who is you? I can't. <laughs> no, but this is how they act on Twitter. And then when Don't I... Don't babe. Everybody gonna get spanked at the end. You're gonna get spanking. Everybody knows what they Uh-oh, she's staying. I look so raggedy. First of all, I... You look I've great. Been, you look no, fantastic. I look raggedy. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, and I've been up all day, y'all working. The pink print in stores. <laughs> No, but here's the thing. You've been but here's working the thing. too, right? I hear that. No, but here's the thing. Even on the, even on the, even on the, even on the day of this like triumph of, so, even to do the triumph of this third album, like these thoughts still are heavy on your mind about life after this part of it and, and nurturing that part of it and not denying yourself to figure out that this is also something I want to accomplish. As much as what you've been able to achieve musically, you know, motherhood is something that keeps keeps. It's because. Going. Not really motherhood necessarily, right? But it's because I lost a big part of my life because one of the reasons was because I was a workaholic. Because I couldn't focus on anyone else. Maybe they needed more attention. And I, ha I take care of my whole family. So... Mm -hmm. If I'm gonna choose between working my ass off and giving you, one human being, all of my attention, you might get, you might get forgotten sometimes. Not because I don't love you, but because I got the weight of the fucking world on my shoulder and if I don't do it, no one's gonna do it. I can't depend on no other human being to get up and do this for me, seriously. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I realized that men are like children. <laughs> you know, it's like, you gotta, oh, baby, oh, baby, it's like, That's your oh, new my. noise, that's your new noise. That's my new shit, <laughs> nah. Wait, do no. it again, do it louder. No, it's really, I never see a man. I never seen a man move back when I make a sexy noise. I said, <laughs> "My wife's here. Like, my wife's here. I gotta be oh. here." <laughs> <laughs> okay. No respect to that. Respect to okay. your wife. No, but maybe that's it. Maybe you just haven't like you're going through a time of now like. <laughs> no, you're right. Men, men are very bo can be very boyish and very mature. But it's like if you like you it seems like you have to find that right partner in your life. Absolutely. You know. And, and that, to me, that's a... And you know what's funny? You know what's funny? When I play the record, I was listening to the record on the way here because I've been studying Nicki Minaj like a university for the last couple of days and listening to everything. My wife said that, like, she's ready to have a real man, a real boyfriend, a real a Where's real your wife? Person. Where's yeah. your wife? She, she, Danielle. Danielle Smith. That's your yeah. wife? Yeah, Danielle Smith. She's a writer, too. She's Shout incredible. Shout out to you. Yeah, from Oh, you're, you're his wife? Oh my God, you guys together are so brilliant. That's brilliant. No, but she heard that like a record review. I'm playing the album randomly 
And she hears a couple of lyrics and she's like, Nikki's ready to have a real boy, like a real man, a real boyfriend, a real situation. And here's what I said. I get all real man, like I'm like, well, she just turned 32. So I'm like, she's, you know, she's ready for that, like, because you know when you're in your 20s, it's all fun and games and like, now nah, it's like it's serious business and figuring yeah. out what your life is. And you know, you start you start really like thinking, yes, reflecting and looking forward, like, whoa, you know, um, you gotta have communication. Like communication is so important and people people sometimes you could be right next to someone for hours and not communicate. Yeah. Like I could sit with you right here for the next two hours yeah. and leave having understood nothing that you just fucking said. Yeah. And you understood nothing I just said. And then sometimes you can speak to somebody for ten minutes and feel like, oh, they get it. I get it. Yeah. Oh my god. We you like that? Yeah. That's what so, we all want. We all want that. It's yes, just, it's, it's, you just it's want somebody hard. to yeah. get it. And you know what? You know what I really want? I want someone to appreciate how hard I work. Like, I, I just want someone... I want somebody to get up in the morning and when they see me on my laptop after, after I done been up for three hours more than you have and now when you get up, you're able to get up whatever time you want to and go to the gym. I want you to just acknowledge that I've been up working so that you can live happily. Like, I need you to see that. And if you don't, and if you don't see that, you're gonna chip away at me, and tear and then it down, and, and it one and yeah, down, and, yeah, and one day I'm gonna feel like I don't have anything left mm -hmm. because everything I had, you didn't nurture, you didn't see that it's so seldom that you will meet a woman that's like, I got you, I got you. From but y'all y'all have to have each other though. Y'all gotta it's gotta be more of a balance. And we do take turns. and we yeah. do and and we do and we did and we love each other very much. But I just started. I mean, it's both ways. I'm not an angel. Where no one is. But my point is that one of my big ish, my, my big things that I'm looking for in whatever man I went off into the sunset with. It's just him acknowledging I'm not like the chicks that come up to you in the street that want to take, take from you. I don't want to take nothing from you. I'm good. I want to uh. give you. I want to give you everything you don't have and everything you need. And I want us to give each other. And it has to be like that because if I'm just the only one giving and then you stuff, you know. <sighs> Yeah. And then in some ways, maybe a man would feel like he can't be with me because maybe he doesn't get the upliftment that he feels that he needs as a man. And maybe I feel you got to be that man for me to treat you like a man. You understand what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm yes. not ever going to give you what you don't deserve because I've done that in so many other ways yeah. like made it so easy for you and at the same time we're talking about my best fucking friend like somebody that I would really jump in front of a Would fucking you before bus. all the all the fame all the success all the before situation. and yeah. after yeah nothing changed I'm like the most loyal chick like you know what I'm saying like I don't I don't um I didn't if you ask anybody that knew me from before this shit, they'll tell you I was the same exact way. So people can say whatever the fuck they want to say about me. I've been this way. I've been this way. Like, no. I've been, you know, trying to run my own shit. I've been like that. And it's just a sad time because for the first time in my life, I realized everything I thought is changing right in front of my face. Like, I didn't plan this. Throughout this whole year, and, and the album reflects that, right? Yeah. I didn't plan it. It just 
it's, it's happening. Like, people don't realize that, like, people keep talking to me and asking me questions, and it's like, I can't really answer certain questions because it's still happening right now, yeah. and I'm still going through the motions of, like, what am I going to do? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you don't just stop loving someone. You don't just stop caring for them. You don't stop worrying about them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially when you grew up together. You know what I'm saying? And he really, really held me down and in the beginning, like, was the perfect person. That's why, mm -hmm. that's why people's like, oh, well, you, you spoiled and you, you spoiled this person. I didn't spoil, no, I gave him what he gave me. He gave me his all and I gave him my all. Mm -hmm. So if it, I'm gonna give you anything you want, anything that's gonna make you happy, as long as you're doing what, I'm gonna give it to you. But then I think the problem is, you know, like, like a spoiled kid, if they're used to getting, getting, getting everything, right? And as soon as you say, oh, no, 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 you can't do that because today you ain't gonna be. It's like, it's like entitlement. And you're not getting, I don't do because I have to. I do because I love you and I, I want, want to. to. I want to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You shouldn't just right. expect it. Right. And, yeah. And some, and you gotta work for it. I work for it. You stopped feeling that it was being appreciated. Yeah, I just, I just thought I need to be appreciated because I don't even see my family for this shit. Like I'm in New York right now, and I haven't seen my mother. I haven't seen my little brother. I didn't get to go to my little brother's graduation. Like I cried for weeks about that because. I wanted him to know that no matter what, I'm his big sister and I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna put him before anything, but that time, I couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, people think that this shit is just about fame. I don't fucking want fame. I don't even care about fame. I, I want to do my music. Mm -hmm. I don't need to be seen and I don't need to be in anyone's pictures. I just want to do my music and I want to inspire my fans because they inspire me. They always make me feel like I can do anything I want to do. And I, sometimes I feel like if I stop, they're going to feel like we could stop. What we doing? Yeah. And I don't want them to give up on they shit. You know what I'm saying? I was right here living in New York, taking the train, going to school, dealing with problems that I couldn't talk to my mother about. And... Wanting to understand why, like you know what I mean, feeling feeling so down and out, and I came through all of that. Yeah, you you said like yesterday. I feel like it's still 06. Like, and you said that also on things go. Like, do you often look back and reflect on like, damn, how did I how did I get here? Like the 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 journey to get to this place. All the time, all the time, because I remember living with my mother, and we used to just pray. I know it sounds so cliche, but my mother um, would just make me pray so much. And that's why it's never left me. You know what I'm saying? Like, she would be like, anything you want, pray about it. And and I, she just instilled that in me. So that's how I am to this day. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes I feel like, how did I get from buying a beef patty and an Arizona? Oh, you talking real queen stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Cocoa bread or no cocoa bread? No cocoa patty. bread, boo boo, because I couldn't, I had just enough money. Wait, this used to be my shit. I said this before, y'all. Some of y'all. I said I had a, a beef patty, a Arizona, and the 25 cent or 35 cent granola bar. Whoa. All right, for dessert. <laughs> for dessert. <laughs> and, and shit was really real. And 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 then sometimes like I would go to school. I, you know, I went to um, LaGuardia High School, and sometimes the fame like school, fame school, I can say. My like I would really all the kid people. Some of the kids, I guess they, I don't know. They have a lot of them have rich parents in that school, and I would have to leave and get like French fries with hot sauce and ketchup. <laughs> yep, and so that's when I say hot. For, uh, four wings and some french fries, yeah. hot sauce and ketchup, nigga. He telling it, he hiding for real, nigga. Still catch a nigga. Wait, wait. 
Yo, Nick, you know you're the first one to rap on Crown, too. You set it off. You're the queen. I did? Yeah, nobody raps. No nobody wants to talk. Nobody's rapped ever. Right, Jerry? Nobody's rapped. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're so freaking... Interactive, yeah. So, yeah, 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 I just... They know every lyric oh, from the mixtapes. Yeah. Fit it down and I'm ready to play. When you're out, <laughs> bitches never can say, say, fuck I look like giving birds they props. Bitches act like they hot, but I heard they not. It's amazing. Your security looking all do serious. Do you see what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but it's all love though. Like, but do you see what I'm that? saying? Uh, yeah, like, definitely. All right, settle back down. We here. We here. We here. The jacket's off. All right, okay. That is a. We gotta turn up and we gotta go down a little bit. How old is that freestyle, y'all? No, but no, but you live the. But here's the thing, it's the authenticity of it, right? right. These are, these, this is your life. You put it in the I art. I really you lived it, it and people, it. people really saw me And they connect it. to it, because that may be their experiences. You know, there's a lot of girls out there in Jamaica, Queens right now. Get, you know, working there. Not, and like you said, you was like, you, got, you said you did a lot, all these nine to fives. You got fired from everything. You had all these up and down jobs, Wall Street. Like, you know, it's like trying to live your dream, but dealing with the harsh reality. And a lot of people ain't built for it. Like, growing up in New York is tough. And you came from... You came from Trinidad and the culture shock of that. Like, talk about how you were able to survive that transition. When I came from Trinidad, I thought it was gonna be so picture perfect. I thought it was gonna be like a big mansion. Because when I was in Trinidad, I lived with my grandmother, God bless her, and we had a lot of um, cousins in the house. And we had a lot of animals in the house. It was like mad cats and dogs and one time I jumped on this dog's back thinking it was a horse. <laughs> I was thinking I was gonna ride the dog like a goddamn horse and the dog started snapping on me and I ran for my dear life. And ever since then, I was scared of them. So oh, You don't like dogs now because of that? I like to look at them, but I don't want them near me. I don't trust them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't trust them. But I mean, I, I think I came from Trinidad and when I came to, um, I moved to Queens and um, me and my brother had an accent, and that was the first, that was the first thing we had to deal with, um, dealing with like people teasing you for your accent. Yeah. And um, my brother, not only was, did he have an accent, but he looked Indian, so he got double. And it was to the point where he had to learn how to fight and just start fucking niggas up. <laughs> Shit, because yeah. because they wouldn't even let it they wouldn't even let him rock and mm -hmm. he was quiet so they thought if you quiet you a punk keep picking on him keep going at him yeah, yeah. after a while I remember one day he ran in the house got a knife came somebody said yup it's three it was three <laughs> dudes it was like the three neighborhood bullies yeah and my brother went I don't know what he did but ever since that ain't leave him alone leave never, him out to that ever again he's older he's older than me older, yeah okay. so he held you down so nobody messed with you at oh, that yeah, point yeah yeah he would do drop everything for me and do you know do anything and he's my baby I love my big brother so much like that's my heart and soul because when my parents left us in Trinidad for two years to come to America and figure things out, I had my brother. So he's the only family member that I've never been away from in my whole life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we was in Trinidad for two years without my parents. When my mother left Trinidad, I thought she was going to come right back. So I thought maybe next week my mother would come back. Maybe next week, maybe the week next, you know. When I realized maybe my mother's not coming back. That was very hard. For sure. And you know, when I got to America and met her again, I had this weird psychological thing that whenever she would leave the house, I would chase the car. I would chase the car and run. And she would be like, her friends would get mad because they didn't understand, but I always thought maybe I maybe she wouldn't come back again, you know? Mm -hmm. And I slept with my mother for a very long time. Like <laughs> I was like in the bed, sleeping like literally under her Whatever, arm, yeah. like, cause I was like, I'm not, You're losing. not leaving again. I'm not yeah. losing her again ever, you know? Because 
and you know, not only did I miss her and stuff and I was reunited with her, but then she was so friendly with me. You know, when, when I came to America, <laughs> um, she was so friendly with me and so much fun. And she was like, like, like my best friend. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why I talk about our relationship being strained. How protective you are. Yeah, sure, because man. my mother wants to be in this thing now. And I, I don't want this for anyone that I love. It's too heartbreaking. I don't want her exposed to social media. I, I don't want people critiquing you, uh, yeah, anything like, about her I, it's or just, judging her. Or, yeah. It just makes me feel like I know what the shit feels like. I don't want it for anybody that I love. You know, I don't want people to have a go at them. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm just like, I'm grown. And I'm just like, I don't see you as grown. I see you as my baby. <laughs> <laughs> like, now you're the parent. Yeah, crazy, and, yeah. I, and it's crazy. Like, me and my mother, we have the craziest relationship now. And when I moved to Atlanta, I still was talking to my mother every day. Just to give you an idea of what this business does to people. Mm -hmm. Every day when I moved to Atlanta, I was talking to my mother every day. The last year when I was writing All Things Go, months ago, I was going weeks without talking to my mother. And that was not good for my soul. But we had gotten to such a place that she felt she was right and I felt I was right. And now it's like, well, now I'm grown, so now what? It's like, I feel like I know this is my, this is my uh, territory. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you in it because I, it's not for you. Yeah. And she feels like, I'm the one that pushed you to follow your dream. And so in a way, it's like, what do you say? What do you tell your mother? Like. Yeah. Because anything you say is gonna come across crazy. How do we get to Atlanta? Like, what's the point right before you go to Atlanta? Like, what's going on with you to feel like, I'm gonna learn this, I don't understand this yet, but I'm gonna learn this business and I'm gonna learn how it works and I wanna be in it and I wanna go to the top. Like, I felt like people around me were taking advantage of me. They took advantage of the fact that I didn't know the business. So I, um, I met Waka's mother. Mm -hmm. That bad name, yeah. And um, I went to Atlanta, and I saw that there were apartments in Atlanta for seven hundred dollars. I freaked the hell out. <laughs> I was like, two bedrooms, and they got a washing machine. Oh hell no! I'm out. No, I'm good. Y'all from New? If you from New York, I was like, fuck. I'm be able to wash my clothes every couple days. Yes, nah. <laughs> um. <laughs> But like it was seven hundred dollars. I fuck. I thought I won a lot. And you had money stashed, I guess, right? You had been saving well, money a little well, bit. Well, no. I moved there. I think I moved there with two thousand dollars or something like that. Yeah. But I had faith in myself because I had already started booking shows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Remember when I was living in New York, y'all? And I used to do like Boston, Philly. Like I was East doing Coast circuit. Yeah, real quick. I was doing shows, so I knew that when I got out there. She was a booking agent. I knew that I would have get so I just did it all on faith. So I went to Atlanta and I saw the apartment and I came back and I said, Safari, we moving to Atlanta. <laughs> and he was like, All right. <laughs> and, and we drove. He drove. He, he drove in his little hoopty. <laughs> and I drove in my BMW. Uh oh, uh oh. And <laughs> <laughs> And, but you know what? I was so madly in love with him. Like, yeah, for real. As a friend.